In this video recording, we're going to be um, talking about C4 and CAM photosynthesis. We just finished discussing photorespiration and all of the costs associated with photorespiration, uh, including a 50% loss in the sugar output, um, a 50% loss in uh, RUBP regeneration, and uh, more ATP that is required. ATP here, there's actually ATP, oops, ATP that is used in um, the reuptake of the amino group, so it's a more costly um, process here. And that CO2 is a product of, um, from the mitochondrion uh, without the production of ATP. So several costs associated with photorespiration, which remember uh, increases in times of high light and high and temperatures, high temperatures. So we ask the question, why does photorespiration exist? Uh, because it likely uses up excess energy that gets absorbed by the plant um, that would otherwise result in photo inhibition. And so it's a way to utilize some of that um, excess absorbed energy so that it prevents the photooxidation, uh, photooxidative damage that uh, breaks down the light reactions uh, electron transport chain. Now there are two, these two forms of photosynthesis that evolved in response uh, or as a way to um, limit photorespiration in these extreme habitats where uh, the plant would normally, a C3 plant would normally be under um, the, uh, the amount of light stress that would be under would lead to photo inhibition. These plants can continue to photosynthesize. So um, the whole idea here is to concentrate carbon dioxide at the site of Rubisco uh, because remember photo re respiration is where CO2 is being outcompeted by oxygen. So these are two forms of photosynthesis that evolved to concentrate CO2 at the site of Rubisco. Now we refer to this terminology here. C3 refers to um, the first stable carbon compound or, um, after CO2 fixation after that um, carboxylation step. Um, so a C3 plant produces its first stable carbon compound as a three carbon sugar or a three carbon compound. This is an intermediate, not quite a sugar yet, yet, which as we know is 3PG, 3-phosphoglycerate. A C4 uh, and CAM both um, have their first stable carbon compound is a four carbon molecule which is um, initially oxaloacetate, o acetate, which then gets converted into malate. And both of these are four carbon compounds, but oxaloacetate is the first initial um, stable carbon compound that's produced from the fixation of CO2. Now these, just a, a couple of um, notes on these individual types of species. Over here, um, so if we look at C4 plants first, C4 plants are, um, examples would include uh, corn or maize, uh, what else, um, sugarcane is an example, which we can see right here, here's corn, um, and even some broadleaf species, this is an amaranthus. Um, and these are C4 plants. There are about 7,600 species of C4 plants. Um, grasses, we didn't mention, which is important because in the Great Plains we have a lot of grasses that are C4 plants. Um, there are generally no trees that are C4 species. The, uh, these plants are um, limited in distribution to arid to semi-arid climates with 
summer rainfall. Not in, you know, rain, areas where rainfall is restricted to winter or spring. Uh, let's see, they, <coughs> so they're, therefore they are excluded from <coughs> latitudes of 0 to 20 degrees, <coughs> such as tropical forests, where they would be shaded out. Um, and remember, the C4 plants, like can plants, are um, have evolved to be in highlight environments. So being an understory shaded plant is not going to be an ideal habitat for a C4 plant. Um, if we look at cam plants, cam plants are <coughs> shown here. We have a cactus, which is a um, cam plant. And cam, by the way, stands for Crassulacean acid metabolism. And they, this um, form of photosynthesis was first discovered in a plant uh, in the family Crassulaceae. Um, so cact cacti and um, pineapple, I think I called the above figure there a cactus, but this is a pineapple. And over here is a, an example of a cactus. And other succulents, um, agave, uh, well, Wichia, um, and these are all considered xerophytes, um, plants that grow in arid, um, dry environments. Um, also, epiphytes, several epiphytes are, um, are, have utilized CAM metabolism, and epiphytes include, um, plants that grow on other plants, bromeliads, orchids. Okay, what I like about this uh, cactus picture here is there's a diamond ring, it looks like, right in the image. Um, and considering that this form of uh, photosynthetic metabolism is highly expensive, it's an appropriate scale to use here. All right, um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the geographic distribution of these uh, two species. Um, we're going to use this uh, map here, which shows the... Um, percent species of C4 plants. So here we're looking at the geographic distribution of C4 plants. You can see they're concentrated kind of in the um, latitudes here in the middle. Um, you can see the Great Plains over here, um, parts of South America, a large part of Africa, uh, and so forth. So this is kind of reiterating the climate that they are um, adapted to and limited to. So looking at C4 plants specifically, we can see um, that there's a difference between C3 leaf anatomy and C4 leaf anatomy. So you should recognize um, basic structures of the leaf that we've talked about in the past. Um, this is referred to this as the palisade mesophyll uh, versus the spongy mesophyll. Lots of air spaces between um, the mesophyll cells. In contrast, if we look at a C4 plant, our leaf, uh, we can see that the mesophyll cells are much more um, densely packed together, very few air spaces between these cells, um, and we can see that they're completely forming a ring here around this next set of cells that uh, is referred to as the bundle sheath cell. Over here we have bundle sheath cells as well, but you can see they're much smaller in a C3 plant and they lack something that over here you can see in a C4 plant. Uh, the bundle sheath cells have these green uh, structures representing chloroplasts. So bundle sheath cells are going to be important in photosynthesis for a C4 plant. And we'll see um, the advantage here of this leaf anatomy. Um, first of all, as if you recall, the whole uh, goal here is to concentrate carbon dioxide at the site of rubisco. So here we're looking at an actual slide of a leaf with the uh, vascular tissue in the center and a ring of bundle sheath cells encircling the vascular bundle. Um, and then mesophyll cells completely packed around. And this is referred to as Kranz anatomy, which um, Kranz means wreath. In German, apparently, 
um, what you can see rep sort of describes the arrangement of the bundle sheath cells and the mesophyll cells surrounding the, bu the um, vascular bundle. So what we'll see here is that carbon dioxide is getting concentrated in the bundle sheath cells and by being so packed together here if CO2 diffuses back out of the bundle sheath cells the mesophyll cells can recapture it. So that's um, a major advantage of the physical uh, structural representation of these um, uh, an arrangement of these cells. All right. So we're going to take a look at the uh, process here. That there are basically two steps um, that we'll concentrate on in C4 photosynthesis. Um, so here is a. There, all these numbers um, shown here are for six different molecules, but um, essentially one at a time is fine. But you can look at it, uh, the, the ratio between all of the different um, molecules is one to one. So we have a carbon dioxide molecule that enters a mesophyll cell and in this case we don't have the Calvin cycle intermediates and enzymes um, in the mesophyll cell. So this um, CO2 molecule is going to undergo a first carboxylation step. And that means that the carbon dioxide, this one, this is a one carbon molecule, is going to be fixed with this three carbon molecule here, which is called phosphoenyl pyruvate. All right, you can see that there's a phosphorus group attached to this three carbon molecule. And so three plus one carbon there equals four carbons. So here we have four carbons. The phosphate group got removed when uh, carboxylation occurred here. All right, so this is oxaloacetate, this four carbon molecule, and it's gonna be converted into malate, which is also a four carbon molecule. Now malate, we're still in the, in the mesophyll cell here. Malate can then pass into the bundle sheath cell. It can be um, transported into the bundle sheath cell. Um, and in the bundle sheath cell, which if you recall is now uh, kind of isolated far away from you know the site where CO2 um, first diffused in. Uh, in the bundle sheath cell CO2 can now be released from the malate so now we have this step here which is called decarboxylation. This is the decarboxylation step. So CO2 is released from the malate. We have this four carbon molecule that now is going to become a three carbon molecule again as this one carbon molecule is released. So we'll come back to pyruvate here in just a minute. CO2 then as it's um, decarboxylated from malate is now available to be <coughs> fixed by RUBP. Here is our friend ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate which is now going to be fixed uh, um, it's going to be carboxylated by this carbon dioxide molecule using the M enzyme Rubisco to catalyze the process, uh, resulting in two 3-phosphoglycerates. And these are bracketed to show two, uh, six groups of two, essentially. Okay, so this is the, the process here that we've already been talking about with C3 photosynthesis. Now the question is what happens to what's left over from malate? We have this pyruvate uh, molecule now, three carbon molecule that uh, now can be transported from the bundle sheath cell now, uh, which is where the Calvin cycle is happening in the bundle sheath cell. Oops, cycle. Um, can be transferred back to the mesophyll cell and then it re requires a, a phosphorylation step by ATP to add that phosphorus group back on. So phosphate is going to be added to pyruvate to then recycle phosphoenyl pyruvate. So this is a, a, a cycling um, step here to regenerate the, um, the carbon accept, the CO2 acceptor molecule, which remember before the CO2 acceptor or down here is RUBP in C4 photosynthesis, the first CO2 acceptor is phosphoenyl pyruvate. So that pretty much summarizes the steps that are involved in C4 photosynthesis. Uh, one important enzyme that we want to take note of here is phosphoenyl pyruvate carboxylase. Um, phosphoenyl pyruvate carboxylase. And as you'll notice here, carboxylase, 
there's no oxygenase in the name of this enzyme, unlike Rubisco, which we already talked about, is also uh, not only a carboxylase, but also an oxygen. So we'll continue with this topic in the next video.